so today we are going to be talking about books I was wrong about. I went in with the wrong expectations, either thinking I would love them or hate them, and it was the opposite. We're gonna start with an old one, and that's The Ocean at the End of the Lane. This was my very first Neil Gaiman book. I bought it from a bookstore, one of those blind date with a book things, if you know what I'm talking about, where bookstore workers will wrap a book and then write a little a little note about what the book is about and then you pick it based off of that. Okay, so this book was written about a young child who goes on a journey with a girl next door and she made it sound so sweet and whimsical and that was rude. So I showed it in a reading vlog, me picking this book and unwrapping it in the vlog, found out that it's a dark fantasy. At the time, I didn't read anything dark, anything grim, anything gritty or scary in any sort of way. Yes, I'm a different reader now than I once was. I was sure I would hate this, but because it was a whole event in the vlog, I felt obligated and it's short, so I did. Not only did I fall in love with one of my favorite authors of all time, Neil Gaiman happens to be one of my favorite audiobook narrators of all time because I switched back and forth between the physical and the audio. And I loved this story so much. When I unwrapped this book, I was positive I would hate it. I almost didn't read it. And it introduced me to one of the best authors out there, in my opinion. Just Wonderful. Another oldie but a goodie, one that I talk about on this channel a lot, Pet Cemetery. My first experience with Stephen King was The Long Walk, I'm pretty sure it's called, which was written under his pen name. I was told it was the best place to start with King. I could, I could do a whole rant video on this book. I hated it so much. So I thought, wow, don't ever want to read another King book really, really don't want to touch this author again. So this was around the time that Daniel and I had just recently become friends. He is a really big Stephen King fan. He was positive that I would like more King if I gave him another go. He sent me Pet Cemetery for my birthday and he was right. This is a book that I have loved so hard because of its incredible exploration of grief. I think the story itself was really interesting as well, but the story, it really felt like the story and the horror were a tool to discuss grief. And it's one of the best explorations of grief I've ever read. And I read it shortly after losing someone very close to me, so it was much needed. Speaking of Pet Cemetery, the next book on my list is gonna be The Eye of the Dragon. So, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I read Pet Cemetery. I loved it. I read Misery. I really enjoyed it. I read The Eye of the Dragon thinking, oh my goodness, King is one of my new favorite authors. I hated this book so much. So funny story, The Eye of the Dragon uh, was a book that King wrote for, I think, he, I think his daughter, because he was writing horror and she wanted to read something of his, so he wrote a middle grade fantasy. I really didn't like it at all. Apparently neither did any of his fans and he got a very visceral reaction from him about this, from them. He got a very visceral reaction from them about this book, which was what inspired Misery, which I just think is the funniest story ever. But anyway, I was really excited to read whatever King wrote. I was really excited to read a fantasy by him. Did not like the Eye of the Dragon, but uh, you know, I've had a journey with King in general. Next up, I can't find my copy of it, but Wuthering Heights. Uh, this is a book that a friend read and hated so much that she did an hour long rant video on her channel and she wanted me to read it because she was sure that I would hate it too. And I loved it so much. To be fair, she went in expecting a romance, which I did too, but you know, it's not a romance. It's a tragedy. I love tragedies and I just also really loved the exploration of the cycle of abuse in this book. Um, it's, it's a dark book. It's not, uh, it's not, it's not easy to read. It's not a fun experience to read, but I got so much out of it and I really enjoyed reading it. So I was really wrong about this one. Anna and the French Kiss. Oh, this is 
a book that was really popular on booktube when I first joined up and I didn't read a lot of contemporary but I thought if I'm going to like contemporary it's got to be this one because nobody doesn't like it. Enter Murphy. I wrote a rant review on Goodreads so check that out if you want to but I started off the review by saying that it gets one star because Goodreads doesn't allow you to give zero stars so I really didn't like this book. To summarize it, it's a romance. Oh my golly, how do I even summarize this book without just going into a rant? Our main character, she's not very likable. She, I don't even know how to do it. She went, she went to Paris to boarding school and she wants to be the number one film reviewer in the world, but she's shocked that Paris has cinemas and movie theaters and likes movies. She, she falls for the first guy she meets who's just the most cliche nothing of a man uh, and he's in a relationship. So she just proceeds to cheat and it's romantic. She also has these really strange, disturbing thoughts thinking about like ripping the girl's hair out and keeping a tally of like who spends more time with him and like she has these weird internal thoughts that are very uncomfortable and uh the girlfriend's a really pleasant sweet trusting kind girl but she's villainized because you know she's gonna be cheated on but we should like the main character I don't know man I, I didn't like it next book on the list is Percy Jackson so I did not expect to like this series I read it because it won a poll of like I did a video of popular books that I don't want to read but people really want me to read and I did a poll you guys get to pick which of these books I'm gonna choose and you chose Percy Jackson I was really nervous about reading this because I don't tend to read a lot of middle grade I have a hard time with middle grade um, not because I have an issue with it but just because I I have a really hard time turning off my critical brain and just going along with the whimsy of the story which I did struggle with with this book as well but eventually got over it and had a great time and I was afraid that I would really not like it and disappoint a lot of people's nostalgia because this is a series that a lot of people grew up on and love really hard and I ended up really 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 enjoying this book on the other side of that, I was excited to continue on with the series and really, really, really didn't like book two. But as as I've said in other videos, I will be continuing on with the series. I'm finishing book three, I'm reading book four, and I hope to at least come out of the series having enjoyed it. Next book in the video is gonna be Twice in a Blue Moon. So Christina Lauren is a writing duo to friends who write romance books. And romance isn't my preferred genre, but Christina Lauren is an author duo that have won me over. I've read several of their books and I've enjoyed everything that I've read by them. Enter Twice in a Blue Moon. <laughs> so they're, they're, when I'm in the mood for a romance, they tend to be the team that I go to. Uh, I'm, they're, they're more recent books where when they started leaning more into romance and less into, I haven't read their earlier work. But anyway, to put, I, I'll, I'll be brief about Twice in a Moon Moon, Twice in a New Moon. I, it, 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 it was supposed to be a, uh, uh, what's it called? Second chance romance. And what it ended up being was two really unhealthy people that are very, very bad for each other and they hook up sometimes when they meet up and they never really get good for each other and it wasn't romantic. I also have a Goodreads review for that one if you wanna see me go into more depth about it. Last book on in this video may not be a surprise. Well, actually it may because it was a long time ago that I read this book, Peter Pan. So. A long time ago, I realized that I haven't read very many classics. The school system that I was in did not require classics as reading. Their biggest concern was that kids were reading and if they weren't picking up books on their own, they got assigned books, but if they were picking up books on their own, then we're good. Which, you know, appalls some people, but I thought it was a really good system. It made me not hate reading. So I was an adult with a booktube channel and realized I've read one classic in my entire life. Maybe I should give classics a go. So I set myself a challenge to read a certain number of classics and the very first classic I picked up was Peter Pan because I thought it'd be an easy start. I don't know if I went into this book expecting to hate it. I don't think I went into this classics challenge with the anticipation of coming out of it saying classics are terrible. I genuinely wanted 
to give this um, category, not genre, category a chance. But I know that I didn't go in expecting it to be my favorite book of all time. And now I love classics. A lot. Actually, in that vein, I guess we could also talk about my favorite series of all time, The Lies of Locke Lamora. I didn't, hmm, how did this one go? I recently re, oh, that reminds me. Dagummit, another book that could be in this video. I had recently realized that I liked fantasy didn't know it before. So I tried The Lies of Locke Lamora. It was way too complex for me and I just couldn't handle it. Not because the magic system is complex, but because Scott Lynch's writing style didn't lend itself well to where I was as a reader at that point. So it wasn't my favorite book. A lot of stuff went over my head. About a year later, I came back and reread it and fell in love with this series hard. Which reminds me, I thought the end of the video was a while ago, but I guess we're gonna keep going. Mistborn has to be on this list. So my brother was a big Sanderson fan, a hyper fan, and kept telling me, you need to read Mistborn. It's better than everything else you have read, even though he hadn't read anything else that I had read. He was sure that he was right. He was pretty right. It took me a while to get into it because I thought I didn't like fantasy the genre, <laughs> and I have a lot of old videos that are prob probably all privated at this point where I used to proclaim, I don't like fantasy. Turns out I love fantasy. And this was the first book to help me realize that. And from here, I started exploring the genre and I love the genre. Which reminds me, I should also talk about The Name of the Wind because I went into this expecting not to like it. I know Jay, so my friend Jay over on Captured in Words, he loves this series, right? And Daniel, my friend over on Daniel Green, doesn't. So I went into this book knowing some people that tend to agree with me on certain books have different feelings about this. I wonder where I'll land. I had watched reviews on it before I read it, which I usually don't do, but I did for this one. And I was positive that I was gonna land in, I'm gonna hate this book, but I wanted to try it anyway for some reason. And I loved this book so much, it's ridiculous. I didn't love the sequel as much, but this book really surprised me. Okay, I guess I'll cut it off there. That's a whole bunch of books that I went in expecting one thing and getting the exact opposite. I'm curious what books surprised you in this way. What books in this stack are you gonna pick up now or not pick up now after this video? Be sure to check out my Patreon if you wanna buddy read books with me or see some of my own writing. I post videos every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday. No, I don't. I post videos every Tuesday through Friday. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye. Ooh. I'll do the job.